No, I I win every debate. <laughs> yeah. All uh, right. Or I let you. We're live. My mic's not on. Oh, yeah. I was thinking of cutting you loose. Jimmy, where's where's Jimmy? We had it there for a second. <laughs> How's my hair looking today? I think you're bald. No, I'm not. That light looks a little weird on my face, but that's okay. <laughs> Man, I'm a handsome looking dude. Whew. All right, cool. Let's get rocking. Welcome back to another episode of Unscripted Exchanges, the fastest growing podcast in Cincinnati, Ohio. Soon to be the fastest growing podcast in all of the world. How fastest growing right now in the tri-state area um this does this does not limit us to northern ohio uh, southern ohio northern kentucky and eastern indiana southeastern fact facts facts hayden it's good to be back in the studio today welcome back brother welcome back oh man i'm excited you know what i'm really excited i'm gonna share something as we're growing so quickly um, eight months quickly, but hey, we're getting there. Uh, we will be opening another studio coming up, so you'll be seeing me coming to you live from our second studio. Sometimes um, we're going to be having, you know, we just got a lot of stuff going on. We're just moving and making waves. Is that studio in Hawaii? I wish Maui, baby. Hey, wait, I got my Aloha. I got my Aloha. Got my Aloha bracelet on. Look at that. I like that, man. People you know, can see you're it. You're just trying to be like me. I got a few too many. I might not have an arm. Holy one of these smokes. Days. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is the uh, ones Ava got me. Very cool. When we were there. And then she was like, don't ever take it off that. So I like, I tied it as tight as I get this knot. And she took hers off like the next day. And I'm like, I literally have to cut this to get it off now. So you're welcome, Ava. Yeah. That's called, that's called Best Father Award. So you were in Hawaii for mm-hmm. what? Ten days? Close to ten days? Like eight. Yeah. I guess we cut the travel. It was like ten. I know we've talked offline, but I don't know if we've talked on the air. But what was your favorite thing about the trip? Probably, I mean, the turtles were dope. Like swimming with the turtles was really cool. Um, getting to go snorkeling, and I mean, diving down into the reefs. You know, I'm a little, I'm a kind of a daredevil when it comes to that sort of stuff. So I think a lot of people kind of shy away from getting like too deep in the water when it's on the reefs with all these fish and stuff. I mean, I, you know, I like have this thought in my mind, like there, there's probably sharks out here, but it's like this little fear part of me that like, doesn't like chirp up. So I'm like, I'm like this, like at one point I'm out here snorkeling. We're on this beach. It's called uh something like white rock beach. And there's these, this this big uh you know the end of the beach it's like all these big rocks it's a big like outcrop and there's a bunch of like uh, sea turtles and fish and stuff and you can swim out into these reefs and you know people were out there snorkeling so i'm like all right i'm gonna get out there and you know i start swimming out and you know i'm out there for a while and i like i i pop my head up to like clean my goggles off and i look around and I'm the only one out here. Like, I'm literally the only one out within, like, probably 40 yards. Like, nobody's even close. And I'm just like, this is probably a bad thing. You know, because, like, if there is a shark in the area, I'm the, I'm like, I'm the only food available. Like, it's either the fish or this, like, juicy-looking, like, white guy. <laughs> like, I'm done for. So, uh, I would say that was one of the, f- of the fun things. I kind of digress on that story. Um, the Hana Road, the Hana Highway, uh, that was... A really cool experience uh, for anybody that hasn't been or wants to go to Maui. The Hana Highway is world renowned, and it's basically this two lane, old, old, old road that travels along through the jungle of Maui, up along the coastline, through the rainforest. Um, you get to stop at waterfalls, you get to stop at different beaches, uh, you get to, I mean, see all sorts of stuff. It, it, it really like reminds you like why people say they want it like you know when we first got there it's it was kind of like oh this is really nice but you know is this is this it you know this is cool this is great weather the resort's nice but when you go to somewhere like that you're like okay I understand why people want to go to Hawaii right why people want to want to say want to go out to a place like this because you get to drive through the, the rainforest and then we got the uh, the end of this Hana highway. And we came back the other side of this volcano. And it was literally like a lot of the scenes on this highway are from Jurassic Park. Like the, you know, that very, like one of the Jurassic Parks where they're flying on the helicopter 
and the guy's got his uh like the wind thing. What's it called? You know, he's sitting up, he's attached to the boat, and he's up in paragliding, a paragliding, right? Paragliding, pa- yeah. Pa- so the very opening scene, the paragliding, where he, all of a sudden, like they the 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 boat, like they look down and the people are gone off the boat, and the boat hit the rocks. So that scene's actually filmed in Maui, and you get to see like where that was at while you're driving. So there's a fun fact for you. Pretty dope. Um, but overall, I mean, awesome trip. Uh, I I could go on for hours. Well, about I'm, sh- it. I'm sure it was one awesome to have again additional quality time with your family because you live a very busy lifestyle Mm -hmm. um, both work related and just personal hobbies and such it was nice to spend time with your family not to speak for yourself but i'm making that assumption as well as the mental health side of things too right it's just good to take a break from the day-to-day stuff and you know experience a little bit of vacation i I think that was part of the probably one of the uh one of the things that was like also a huge takeaway was the I, you know, at the time you don't ever think when you're having a mental health day or you're feeling mentally rejuvenated you're not going man this is so good for my mental health right you're not thinking that right um, but looking back on it that whole week I was there there was a couple reasons why I mean a you're in you're I mean you're in 75 80 degree weather out in the sun all day I mean you can't beat that you got a beach you got a pool. Um, I'm with my two beautiful daughters and my beautiful wife, my family. I mean, it was there, there's a lot of check boxes that it went it went into that being very good for me, right? Um, but another thing was the, you know, I went into the trip and I remember we even had this conversation before I went. And this is this comes back to this like the old adage of leave work at work and you when disconnect when you can. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really made the effort to disconnect from. Not only are our loving unscripted exchanges fans and uh, you know this this whole thing, but also from, I mean, from the day job, from the responsibilities at home. Like I had everybody I needed right there. You know, hypo- you know theoretically. I mean, I had my two daughters, my wife, and my parents, my siblings. You know, if something went down, I was with the people that mattered the most in my life. Mm-hmm. And with that being the case, like understanding that. I was able to go, you know what? The other stuff can wait. The other stuff doesn't really matter. My nucleus is here. Um, And so, you know, that aspect of it, I really had a very uh, tranquil, I would call it tranquil trip. I mean, I did a lot of activities like, you know, body surfing and boogie boarding and snorkeling and, you know, jogging and typical stuff that – um, is good for me, and I I don't like to sit around. So by tranquil, I just mean that 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 peace of mind. Um, it did help that I was six hours behind everybody here. So like even if I was to try to work, I mean it's the time difference. But at home, up and at them in the morning, there wasn't much for me to do. So there was there were some factors that helped with that. But I would say um, again, it's it's one of those things that comes back to like. When you can disconnect, when you have the opportunity to, uh, do it. And it's it's harder, Hayden. I'll say it's harder to do that um, as a as a parent when you're not with, or as a father when you're not with your daughters and your wife. So when you have the opportunity to all be together basically all the time, then you really can go. What do I have to worry about? Like, you know, obviously I want my friends and I want to be safe, but I mean, my family's right here. Yeah, I feel like you, uh, not to psychoanalyze, but to psychoanalyze. I, Go I, for it. I, uh, I have it too from time to time, but it sounds like you're one of those types of people that uh, find it tough to turn it off at times. So like for anyone listening, what would you recommend? Like what, what do you personally do when it comes to trying to turn it off and just relax and focus on, let's say, your family versus, oh, I've got this upcoming project or i've got you know a big presentation with a client that i'm trying to to sell something to like how do well, you turn it off that's, that's the, and that's like that's, that's like a that's a good question um and i'm gonna throw it back to you in a minute but i'm gonna i'm gonna try to answer this the best way i can because i think it's uh it's it's not just a a one size fits all mm-hmm. and it's also not like it all one part one way works every single time i think it's it's like there's some nuance to it uh for me there's there's times when I'm stressing about 
you know, uh, upcoming things with Ava and stuff that's going on in her life, or I'm stressing about things at the house, or I'm stressing about work. Um, my problem is, is that when I try to disconnect, like I'll say, "Oh, I'm going to put my phone down." Right? Okay. I'm, it says I'm. It says I left the phone in the room. That means I've I've done my disconnecting part, right? And that is not to me. That is not the only piece of it. Like. I sometimes go to this, oh, well, if I leave my phone in the car or if I leave my phone in my my drawer at the house and go hang out with the kids or if I leave it in the room on vacation, that means I'll disconnect. That's such bullshit because you're not truly – I mean, you're just you're just putting something down, but your brain probably – if that's the only way you're doing it, like you, you still have complete access to all the thoughts you've got, right? I will say that helps though for some. It, and it, it, can, it can help for me it, too. It, it does, but yeah. – but it's not it, – what I'm saying is that's it's not – It's not the same. It's not, it doesn't work for everybody, and that's not the only way to think about it. So yeah. what what I would recommend, what I I do, and I – like even what sometimes I have – I try, oh, I'm going to disconnect, and you know I'm going to go enjoy this, and I'm still like – I'm walking, and I'm thinking about this deal I'm working, or I'm thinking about you know what, what I want to do later, or I'm thinking about this and that. And what I've really found that works for me, and I did this uh, over the trip, and – I didn't do it as much as I probably should have this past week, actually. But what I did was uh, stop myself, and you can you can say it's you can you can pray for me. Prayer is a big part of my life, uh, but you don't have to pray. Pray. You can talk to yourself. You can run. You can have a five step thing you run through your head. For me, it's I say I say three things I'm grateful for, mm-hmm. and three things I want to forget about for the time being. So really, like, and this is I I kid you not. This is exactly what I do. I say, I'm grateful that I'm healthy or happy. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to be able to try and disconnect, right? That means if I'm able to go try and disconnect, that means that I'm a good place and it's good. It's something that's going to be good for me. I need, I, if I know I need to disconnect, I need to, it's good. It's a good thing I'm trying to disconnect, right? So I say three things, usually in that order, maybe a little bit different order, but those three things. And then I say three other things, which are, and sometimes it's two things, sometimes it's four things. Typically, I try to just keep it three and three. Um, but it's about like, okay, what am what am I? What do I know that even if I put my phone down, even if I turn you know turn my email off, what do I know I'm still gonna be thinking about? And you know, this past week I had an RFP due, right? So if I were doing it this past week, I actually did it Friday night. I gotta okay, I gotta stop thinking about the RFP. Got to stop thinking about it. I've already turned What's it in. What's an RFP for this? Request thing? for a proposal. So it was big, a big, it's a big client that I'm working towards um, landing and a big opportunity they gave us. And so this RFP is like the foot in the door, right? And anybody in sales, when you get a foot in the door, you're like a shark in the water. So, you know, this RFP, it's a big deal. I was stressing about it all week. I had the presentation on Friday. I'm still thinking about it. So I'm driving home. I'm going... Stop thinking about the RFP. Drop it. Nothing more you can do about it. Don't check your emails. Nothing. You, it's Friday afternoon. Leave it alone, right? Second thing is stop worrying about what you're going to do this weekend. Stop worrying about all of your chores, all your stuff you have going on. You got to get there when you get there. Make a list when you get home, but don't worry about it right now. Don't bring that home. Third thing is stop worrying about e- all of your emails. So for me... I was leave, I'm leaving work and I'm going, I'm worried about this. I'm worried about my emails, making sure I'm catching up because I left work a little bit early on Friday because I had to get out of there. I'm like, okay, I, I, maybe I missed something. Maybe I had to do something. These are simple three things, but I'm like, I know that when I get home, I'm going to be, wor- I'm, this stuff is going to be on my mind. And for me, by, by being very specific about what I want to stop worrying about or, or even worrying, what I want to stop, you know, from distracting me those three things if you can get specific and you can highlight like okay i know this is going to be a distraction i'm not going to let it for me that's what helps a lot so that's what i would recommend as an alternative or an option for people is like hey you don't have to be do the grateful part that's what i do you don't have to do that but you can say okay what do i know is going to keep me from relaxing what do i know is going to keep me from being in the present what do i know is going to keep me from giving my wife my full attention what is going to keep me from having a good time with my friend what's going to keep me from being the best father i can be because i don't want to listen because i can't respond to my kids because i'm too buried in my own thoughts you identify those and then you make and then you say okay 
like I need to, I need to set those apart. I need to set those aside. A lot of that is intentionality. So that would be my thing. I mean, what would you, you know, what way, what ways do you have to handle with that, Hayden? Yeah, I think you shared a lot of good points there. I like uh, how you kind of described or what I heard you say is you kind of um, you, you take a moment to put things in perspective and reflect on, OK, what what's my real area of focus or what are my real priorities? And that's kind of something that I would uh, share similarly here is the fact that and there's, again, multiple ways that you could attack this in terms of how do I shut things off uh, at night? And for me, that goes back to my habits throughout the day with what I'm doing. So for me, I need to make sure that I'm exercising. Even if it's as little as 15 minutes, I gotta get some type of physical fitness in. That's extremely important to me. I'm also very careful about the diet or the food that I put into my system because I know that could impact me and keep me anxious or late, staying up late at night. So there's that angle to look at it. But the other thing that I've been uh, recently uh, working on, and this is, I think, a different lens to kind of take this approach into like a work setting, and it has to do with like, what are my three top priorities in life, but also applying that to like a work setting. What are my three top priorities at work? Mm -hmm. For me, outside of work, my three top priorities would be my family, uh, my side hustles or my ambitions and my health. And I probably said that slightly out of order. I would say my health is probably number one. I got to make sure I can take care of myself before I can take care of others, mm -hmm. followed by my family and supporting them. And then three would just be my, you know, interest or hobbies. So taking that lens or that logic and applying it at work. So what I'm getting at would be who are the three top people that I need to be staying informed with or making them informed and giving them updates. Right. To me, that's like my direct boss, uh, a couple of the teams that I work with. And if there's other requests that come throughout the day or like I'm, caught up worrying about them yeah there there's always going to be work that's going to be needed and i have to be willing to recognize that it's all right i can come back to it tomorrow the world's not going to end i mm -hmm. mean i hope not right so that's kind of the lens that i i take there is i'm willing to make sure that i go above and beyond or at least i try to with my immediate teams and my boss the other stuff it's secondary i mean i i'll help when i can but I can't take on everything because if everything becomes a priority, nothing is a priority. Well, right, right. Then you're just you're spinning around in circles. Right. And again, it's the same type of mindset outside of work. I don't know if I uh, brought in the parallels very well there, but I want to make sure that I'm helping my family, supporting them, loving them, putting my time, spending time with them, having enough time to grow with them and have them grow with me. Like I use that same type of mindset with the people that I work with closely. I'm not going to always be able to spend a whole bunch of time with, you know, a random person that is working on a project temporarily. Like, right. I'll be respectful and I'll be nice. But again, if they have something that comes through, you know, at 5 p.m. at night, I'm going to wait until tomorrow. I'm not going to worry about trying to go out and solve that. And I think that is a good mindset to have because you'll never be able to turn it off because there's always going to be something that comes through at, you know, the 11th hour. And again, that's also very subjective. It depends on your job, the role, but. I know what my priorities are, and I stay focused on those. Anything else, I'm going to push that off. It is what no, it is. That's I like how I that. operate. Yeah, I totally like that. I think I like the uh, – I kind of want to note on something. You brought, you're talking about relationships in there and uh, how – you know, those priorities, how they align with, like, you know, your life. So you're saying, you know, at work, here's, here's my – important relationships work and these other ones are secondary right yeah. here's my important uh here's my priorities outside of work here's my first ones here's my second ones and my third ones right and i think i want to tie that into uh something that i've thought about recently that i think we all struggle with a lot is relationships just balancing relationships in general as you get older and what i mean by that is like hayden i'm gonna ask you you know how do you determine and maybe this isn't something you really give a lot of conscious thought to, but how do you determine like where you put your energy out like when it comes to relationships? Like, is there is there some process you go through? Is it is it something that you just know, or have you had to cut people out as you've gotten older and add people as relationships ebb and flow? Like, you know, for me, it's a very complex a complex question. 
Yeah, that's, that's a fantastic question. And I don't think there's an easy answer to that one as well. I mean, for me, I would say it's kind of just intuitiveness mm-hmm. or go with your gut. Um, and it also p- depends on your personality and, and such. Like for me, I do keep my circle pretty small. So I don't worry about having a large friend group of people. I only trust a small amount of people. And how I go about trusting might be a question then that you would ask. And I think that just has to do with kind of how people carry themselves and you know do they walk the talk or are they someone that's just you know bsing constantly and we've talked about this on previous episodes where you know the old saying is do you practice what you preach or i like to say it what is your say versus do gap Mm -hmm. like if you're saying a whole bunch of stuff but you're not actually doing shit then i don't like to associate with people like that to me those people are phony well, it's 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 also makes you go like okay, so like what at what do I actually believe, right? Like okay, you're saying a bunch of stuff like great. When well, there's a point in life where like you're like okay, it's just fucking noise at this point. Like yeah, yeah, like I, you can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And the worst part is when you get and I, I'll say this like to that point, you know, I've gotten there with relationships in my life, and we all do this too, right? We all. You know, I'm 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 guilty of it. Sometimes I say I talk a lot, of, I talk a big game, but maybe it don't fall through. I I notice that, I realize when that happens. But when you like, you get to that clarity of mind where you start to like notice that more. That's for me. If I were to flip the question back to me, where I know like pr- like I you know intuitively understand where to put effort in relationships. I think it genuinely comes down. I've never thought it in that particular way, but I think it genuinely comes down to like, okay, is this person spewing me a line of bullshit or are they having a real conversation with me? Or when I ask them, how is everything going or tell me about your life? Are they just ranting on and on and on where I just know like, okay, this isn't realistic. And what, and like, then I'm like, why are you trying to impress me? Or are they having a legitimate conversation with me? Right. And that's, that's a very simplistic, how are you doing kind of question. But you know, for me, that intuitiveness is more of like, do I feel like I'm getting the real version of you for if, and if I feel like you're being genuine with me, like I'm going to, I'm going to be genuine with you back. Um, we all have limited time, so you also go, "Hey, how much? How do you weigh the amount of effort you're putting in relationships?" Well, that's 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 debatable. Um, you ever heard the saying like the phone goes both ways? Yeah. For me, I used to be the guy that had, like the phone only went one way, and not necessarily like people weren't putting effort into me in my in a relationship, but I was always the one going out of my way and stressing about these relationships I had and communicating with everybody. And then it just dawned on me like one time, like click, like a light bulb goes off and you're like, ding, 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 ding. You know, I'm stressing myself going over the top, which there's nothing wrong with. I'm still going to be that guy. But if they're not going to return the favor or they're not going to, if they can't call me back, I shouldn't be worried about including them in everything I'm doing. Because that, that that means there's not that level of respect there, and that's not not, not that level of care. So I've uh, I mean you just learn that stuff as you grow up. But I would say I liked your answer a lot. I think that intuition, it's a super interesting thing because I think it's spot on. Yeah, I mean to go back to one of the other things though is I think it really does a lot of it goes back to just personality. Like you're the type of person that feeds off of the energy of other people. No, too. no, no. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Of course I no, am. I know. Yeah. I know. I'm playing along with it. And I, I think that's everything that you just described there is not surprising at all. And as you said, you kind of matured and, and realized that, okay, I was putting forth a ton of energy with some of these relationships and I probably wasn't getting much back out in return. It's like, why would I keep, you know, exerting that energy? And you finally came to, you know, the realization that maybe I don't need to be spending as much time or I don't need to be keeping them in the know if they're not willing to do the same thing. You, you hit the, the nail on the head there with saying like the, the level of respect is, you know, not quite there. And for, for me, I'm just very, and some people might find this a, a hot take. I'm very careful with how I exert my energy. I mean, that's at the end of the day, like if you simplify like what we are, we're just a bottle of energy. Right, right. right. And who am I going to give my energy to? Or what am I going to give my energy to? I think I'm very conscious of how I do that. Mm -hmm. And some people might read into that the wrong way and be like, (laughs) oh, he's he's full of it. Or, you know, that's just my personality. And I, again, I think that 
it, it just it depends on the person and kind of recognizing you know one where you are in your life as well if i think back to the days of early college um in high school like you've got your your friends but they're not really they're they're friends by association or in college I would refer to them as drinking buddies, you know? Mm-hmm. It would be someone they could go out and have a few beers Party with. with. Right, but as the time uh, blew by or after we graduated, like, you know, I kind of fell out of touch with some of these people. And do I lose any sleep over it? No, not at all. Right. Well, because I know these people aren't going to be showing up to my funeral. I mean, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I, I won't know. I won't really care. But there's only so many people that I can give my best version of myself to. Now, not to take those words literally, I'm still going to be respectful and be unique. But again, I'm not going to go out of my way to try to hang out with so-and-so that I haven't seen in 10 years. Like, again, you only have a fixed amount of time and energy. And I'm just very resourceful is a better way well, of using it, that. Well, it doesn't come across as a negative. It's just an, it's, it's an interesting way to look at it. And I think it's, you know, you, you, say, you say energy. I think you're, you know... You're ve- you being conscious of that. It's not just like uh, you know people think of energy like inner that kind of energy, but you're saying like the em- effort and energy kind of go coincide with each other, right? Yeah. You're very conscious of where you put effort into things, and very I would even call you very meticulous and very s- specific, analytical, in- in- intentional, <laughs> yeah, with where you put energy, like what what you're willing to put energy into, mm-hmm. and what you're willing not to, and I think. Um, you know, to that point, that's such a, it's such a very, I don't think you realize how healthy that actually is. Maybe, I don't know. I think you're stroking my ego. Maybe, no, I, no, I was just like, I'm like processing. I'm going, I don't think Hayden realizes how like emotionally healthy that actually is because by doing that, you're, you're actually processing and recognizing like, you know, what your important the values are in your life and then pointing that yourself in those right directions. Um, I would say like anything else though, relationships are at their core, like all about effort. And so when you figure out that if you point your, your effort or relate your effort or your energy into the right relationships, those relationships are going to turn around and point back at you, and then you, and then you're going to go way farther further in life by focusing on those than focusing on relationships that might never pick up the phone and call you back. Yep. You know that's 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 just that's my t- that's my take on it. I don't know, call it a hot whatever it is, you know. But let me ask you this. Sorry to cut you off. Do you know who your ride and dies are? Who, oh, one hundred percent. Then that's all you gotta worry yeah, about. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred. I know. Here's the thing. Could those people change over time too? I used to think the answer would be no, but I think they can too, which which is fine. Is the uh, the angle try- coming in and out? Yeah, no, it's a little blurry. It's okay. Yeah. Um, Damn it, Jimmy. Jimmy, you son of a. Uh, you know, I think. Yeah, it can change, but. It's funny you ask me that because I'm thinking like I do I, I could rattle off right away who 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 my who my core is. The reason why I ask you that question is like for me those would be the people that I'd be investing the most effort and energy in. Everyone else, again, going back to what I I said at work is secondary. Yeah, I'll, I'll still be neutral with them or friendly, but again, I'm not gonna go out of my way <laughs> to, to put too much time and energy into to their relationships or to their lives. I wish them well. I want them to be healthy, happy, so and forth. But again, I'm going to be very conscious of who I want to spend my time with and what projects I want to put, you know, my energy. Into. Well, you know what, the, you know what another thing is too, you said that cause I'm thinking about it. And, um, I know we're getting a little close to time with he's around 35 minutes, but, you're talk. We're talking about like the the, the energy you put relate you put into relationships and stuff, mm-hmm. and you know you said the ride or die. Who who are the people that you just know like you, you know you go to battle with? Like you're gonna go you're gonna get in a fight. Like who you calling? You know you got to know who those people are, right? And what's interesting and and I think what's tough in life for all of us, and I think this is where uh, the power of of positive thinking and also, the power of I would say meditation or self reflection um, come into play is knowing 
with all of this minutia of life, with all of this movement, these ins and outs, these life changes, is knowing and reminding yourself of who those people are and what relationships, which relationships are those important ones. And it, it, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you say. That can get very, very gray. Like There's a very, very foggy gray area can get there really quick and if you don't if you don't pay attention to it it can really really cause negative effects in your life if you're putting energy into the wrong relationships and so i encourage our listeners to you know and and this is something i have to do constantly is you know hayden brings up who's your ride or die who are the people that if all else failed if you were having the worst day of your life, the best day of your life, think about the people you want to call. Think about not not not, you don't, not the people you want to call because you want to impress them. Not the people you want to call because you got a new car and you and you think oh like oh this is you know I want, I want to show off. Not those people. The people that you call because you had a long day and you need to vent. The people that you want to call that you've you've had a long week and you want to sit down and, and talk about your week. The people that you know if you went into battle, they'd be right there by your side. They're the only people you call. If you think about those people and write their names down or do whatever you got to do, just lock them in. And today, today, after you listen to this, right now, call to action. Go go reach out to those people Go, go work on those relationships. Tell yourself, I'm going to spend 80% of my time working on those. 80% of the time. So that's what? Five, five out of the seven days of the week, I'm putting my energy into these people. And I'm not saying every single day. I'm not saying literally reach out to every person every day. But I'm saying make yourself, tell yourself those are the ones that you're going to build. Those are the foundations that you're going to build off of. If you do that the reciprocations and and the clarity you'll get through all this other bullshit that we have going on in life is going to get a lot easier because I think at the end of the day, like people are relations, relational people want to feel like they're part of something and part of a group and have those people to lean on. And if you've got that core figured out and you're putting effort into them, the rest of the stuff will figure itself out. Well said, well said power of positivity. Coin that ASM. <laughs> what what is that? ASMR. It's a red people whisper. The what? They whisper when they talk. It picks up everything. I don't know why I did that, but yeah, well well said. <laughs> My mind's on a different level right now. I think real quick to to piggyback onto some of that. A friend is someone that you can share the good, the bad, and the ugly with. Um, or as we were just mentioning, your your rod and dies. Someone that will not get envious when you are highlighting the wins that do come up in your life or, you know, the really big moments, they're there to celebrate with you or they are there when you are struggling and you're at your lowest lows and they're willing to just, you know, take a step back and listen. They might not fully understand, but they're there to listen. Those are friends at the end of the day. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we wrap this up? Wrap it up. It's all you, man. Hey, guys. Thank you once again for joining us on an episode of Unscripted Exchanges. I know we uh, got into some deep stuff today. Hope you enjoyed it. Deep. Um, we are going to continue to grow to uh, try to provide some information that will help you guys out, help you to have better, you know, have better, happier, healthier lifestyles, maybe, uh, you know, easy into learning something new or, or anything like that so we just appreciate you we'll continue to to put this stuff out there we got big things coming your way thanks y'all 